to Tian and I'm really happy to be able to present your work uh, at this workshop. And uh, I'm currently a postdoc at APS and, uh, and so this dark field is actually microscope we are still um, developing and, uh, and so I will introduce some uh, like preliminary results of this microscope. And this is the uh, content of, of today's talk. This, um, well, I will first introduce the motivation why we uh, start to build this extra microscope, and then some results we uh, measured in the polymer lens, and then I will discuss about the preliminary results of the microscope and also the method we use to mitigate the mechanical instability. So first, uh, this field X-ray microscope is designed to use the contrast in bright peaks to reconstruct the 3D distribution of mesoscopic structures such as the structural and the magnetic domain networks like a defect string. And we also want to get a deeper understanding of functional materials by observing the nucleation and growth. And our ultimate goal is to study the phase transitions and the hypersis uh, his hysteresis in quantum materials at low temperature and also high magnetic fields. For this dark field actually microscope, we want to easily switch between the real space and the reciprocal space mode in the diffractometer instrument. And we want to get a spatial resolution around like 100 nanometer for the bunk sensitivity uh, sensitive and element selective imaging. Besides the high resolution, we also want to have like a zooming capability to switch from the high spatial resolution mode to large field of, of view mode over like 15 to 30 keV energy range. And finally, we also want to make the whole setup compact to fit in over like four meter hatch. So based on all these requirements, we have designed the, uh, this dark field X-ray microscope as a setup. The setup is 63 meters away from the X-ray source. And to get a balance of the spatial resolution and in the field of view, we use a matched pair of polymeric lens and condenser and objective lens. We also built a transportator using brilliant CRL, which can easily, uh, which can easily change the focal lens. And uh, uh, this um, diagnostic table will be used for the bright field imaging setup, such as the grating interferometer for phase contrast imaging. And for the uh, dark field actually microscope, the key components is the polymer condenser and uh, um, objective lens. So in order to characterize the polymer lens, we did an experiment at 1pm beamline and APS and use the double grating interferometer to measure the phase error of the polymer lens. So the table um, interferometer is uh, based on the table self imaging effect, which means the grid sample such as grading will have exactly self uh, imaging at a certain table distance. And uh, <coughs> this uh, shows the typical setup of the table interferometer. First, uh, we measure the grating image on the detector results sample, and we call this reference image. And when the sample is inserted and we take another uh, um, image of this sample, we call it sample image. And then the incident uh, beam will be distorted by the sample phase. And this uh, distortion is related to the sample phase. And then we can use the Fourier shifting method to easily uh, reconstruct the sample phase. So we will first measure the polymer X-ray prism lens uh, fabricated by NLAST. And this radio uh, image shows the transmission image just after the lens. The prism structure can be clearly seen. And this image also shows the focal spot and the focusing characteristics and the energy of 20 keV. This prism lens has a very large aperture, which is around 1.5 times 1.4 millimeter square with an effective focal length of 2.2 meter. And the whole uh, focal spot size is around 63 times 73 micrometers with a total gain of 100. 
And then we use the double interferometer to measure the phase error of the uh, polymer lens. And uh, it can be seen the waveforms after the prism lens such very good parabolic shape. And uh, this focal spot of the prism uh, lens has a very large vert uh, vertical tail. We think this is because uh, there is uh, some defects uh, in the fabrication. And then we also measure the polymer component refractive lens. The effective aperture of uh, this uh, polymer CL is around 90 micrometer, and the focal length is 135 millimeter and tiny kV. This figure shows the focal sporting, uh, focal spots uh, image and focal spot size along the distance scan at 20 kV. It can be seen the focal spot size is nearly perfect along the distance. Then we use the table grating interferometer to measure the wavefront after the polymer CRL. And by proper, um, proper getting back to the CRL operation, the phase error after removing the parabolic fitting is shown in this figure. The RMS phase error of this polymer cell is less than lambda over 10, which means that this polymer lens is very, uh, in very high quality with very low phase error. So based on the phase error uh, measurement of the polymer lens, we then built a the dark field X-ray microscope using the matched polymer lens. Here shows the schematic of the microscope. By rotating the objective lens, we can easily change uh, between the bright field image and the dark field image. And uh, <clears throat> the brain cell transportator and uh, the polymer X-ray prism lens can be used as my condenser. So we first start with the bright field image mode to test the X-ray microscope. But uh, the microscope was found to be uh, it's kind of unstable due to the mechanical instability. Here shows the bright uh, field image with uh, a semi star test pattern with an expert time 100 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. It can be seen that the spoke of the test pattern is blurred at large uh, expert time uh, due to the instability. This will be a very big problem for the dark field X ray microscope, which may need tens of seconds to obtain a clear image. To mitigate, uh, mitigate this influence of the mechanical instability, we came up uh, with an image registration method to compensate the dis uh, instability. During the measurement, instead of taking a very long expert time, we take multiple images with short expert time, such as 10 milliseconds, and then use the optimization algorithm to maximize the cross-correlation coefficient to find the sample's relative displacement. So here shows the uh, sample displacement obtained by this cross-correlation method. The displacement is mainly along the vertical direction, which is kind of reasonable for the central beam line. And uh, uh, also we didn't uh, observe any like uh, time dependency on the uh, displacement. And after obtaining the image relative displacement, we use the image registration method to move each image inversely to the original operation and then end all the images together to get an equivalent photon flux. And these two images uh, shows the corrected image with 10 images. Uh, each image has 10 milliseconds uh, exposed time. And here is a, a single 10 millisecond image. And you can see the spatial resolution and this two image is almost the same, but the corrected image has uh, much lower noise and very, uh, higher contrast. So and so, uh, we've shown about the correlation-based method can effectively mitigate the image blurring due to the mechanical instability. However, there is some shortage of this method. First, the cross-correlation method can only get the relative displacement of the whole sample, so local instability has been ignored. Also, the cross-correlation method is sensitive to the image background. That means if your illumination beam fluctuates too much, the method will just fail to find the right displacement. Another disadvantage is that the cross-correlation method requires the pre-knowledge of the sample. 
So this will be very difficult for dark field imaging. So, and uh, uh, there exists uh, several machine learning based method for image restoration. We, we think they may also be used for the dark field microscope as well. And among all the machine learning based methods, the optical flow method is widely used for the object detection. Uh, so here we use the PWC net for the vibration correction. The schematic of the PWC net is shown here. The image one and the image two are the input to the feature extraction network. Then the parameter images are used to calculate the cost volume after image wrapping, which is basically like the cross correlation coefficient. Then the flow estimator is used to estimate the image displacement at each pixel. This PWC net was trained with uh, an MPI Sintel dataset on a GPU cluster. Then we can run this network to predict the displacement locally on a machine with a much smaller GPU. For each prediction, it takes around like two seconds, but this speed can be further improved by using like high performance GPU. Here shows how we use the PWC net to correct the mechanical instability. Same with the cross correlation method. We took multiple images with short export time, and uh, <clears throat> then and the image uh, raw image one here uh, is compared with the initial corrected uh, gas uh, image to get the image displacement map, uh, and then use this image displacement uh, map to calculate another corrected image. And the raw image two is compared with the new corrected image to get another image displacement, and this uh, um, process is repeated repeated several times until to get the final corrected image here. And this zigzag process loops over for each raw image to compensate the mechanical instability. So. Uh, here shows the corrected image using the machine learning method and the image without correction. So if you look in, into the center of this uh, semi star uh, test pattern, you can see the image uh, corrected by the machine learning method shows slightly better resolution compared with the uh, image without correction. So, but um, um, these two images still show that um, this method, the machine learning method is still uh, has lower performance than the cross correlation method. So we think the problem is that for the machine learning method, the, uh, the, the, the estimation of the optical flow on the displacement is not so accurate. So that's why the correction is not so, uh, so perfect. But to compare with the cross correlation method, this machine learning method is much more faster and also more general to the image. You don't need any pre-knowledge of the sample. So we will try to further improve the accuracy of the, this machine learning method and also try to apply it to the dark field image in the future. And by using the cross correlation method to mitigate uh, the mechanical instability, we first test the performance of the bright, bright field image of the X-ray microscope using X-ray prism lens as condenser and the polymeric lens as objective. The sample is a test pattern with the finest uh, structure of 30 nanometer. We took about 100 of images with 10 millisecond export time, then applying the cross correlation method to correct the vibration. And here this image shows the corrected sample image with the smallest light spacing resolution around 214 nanometer. And the whole field of view is around 80 micrometer. These um, right images are the angle on road image and the contrast, the local contrast. It shows that the resolution of the image is angle independent and uniform across all the field of view. Then we also test the bright field image of this microscope using a condenser of brilliant CRL as a condenser and also a 
and the polymer lens and the objective lens at the same uh, energy, same condition. With the Berlin transportator and condenser, uh, you can be seeing uh, the image shows a slightly um, um, lower resolution around 280 nanometer. And also the field of view is only 56 micrometer horizontally and 34 micrometer vertically, which is about half of the setup using X3 prism lens. Another interesting thing is the distribution of the resolution. If you look at the local resolution uh, after angle on roads, it shows uh, um, like the uh, resolution is related to the um, to the angle of the image. So this um, uh, might cause uh, a different uh, X-ray source along the vertical and horizontal sides. All these results also show that uh, the using X-ray prism lens can significantly improve the field of view and also improve the resolution a little bit. And then we also test the dark field imaging of the microscope. Uh, due to the limited time and this uh, pandemic, uh, we didn't have much time to work on the dark field imaging. Here are some preliminary results. Uh, we first imaged the STO's crystal with an objective lens of Berlin transportator. This movie is the dark field image with different set angle scan. And uh, you can see some uh, fine dislocation in this uh, STO cluster. Uh, uh, crystal and another sample we tested is the YBCO crystal. With this sample, we can clearly see the twin lines uh, on the crystal, which uh, corresponds to a spatial resolution around one micrometer. So, in conclusion, we present some pre preliminary results of the underdeveloping high resolution for field microscope uh, common differential meter at uh, high energy. And we also use the grating interferometer to characterize the polymer lens. And the results shows a very low phase error of lambda over 10. With this high quality polymer lens, it can achieve brighter image using 2D parabolic lens and condenser. And also a uniform illumination using the X-ray prism lens, X-ray um, pre prism lens. Mm, the actual pr uh, prism lens can achieve around two times larger field of view than the 2D parabolic lens. We also developed a cross-correlation based method to mitigate the mechanical instability to retain the diffraction limited resolution. The machine learning method also uh, has been tested with more general application for dark field imaging. So based on the current results on the bright field imaging and dark field imaging, we will try to implement the dark field imaging and the cryogenic samples in the future. So uh, that's all for my talk. So thank you for your attention and uh, please feel free to ask any question. Thank you for that. Uh, so we already have one question from Inokenti. Uh, what is the main source of vibrations in your case? The source, the optics, or the sample? Uh, it's basically, uh, we, uh, we, we think in the vibration is mainly coming from the mechanical, it's the sample and uh, the sample vibration and uh, the detector relative vibration because uh, they are on like different tables and uh, there is a lot of uh, vibration around. So it's mainly in the mechanical, it's not in the source. Thank you. Uh, next, I see Henning has his hand up. Yes, I might have uh, missed it. Uh, when do you uh, estimate that you will be going online? When, uh, when will the beam line be operational? Oh, uh, that uh, actually I'm not quite sure because um, Zahir uh, Aslam is the PI of this project. But uh, currently we already did uh, several, uh, two or three, experiments uh, uh, on the dark field imaging and uh, hopefully maybe this year or next year should be okay, I think. Thank you. Okay, and John? Um, I have a question regarding the, uh, the, the polymer lenses. Oh, yeah, so sure. could, could, you, could you kind of roughly estimate for, for how long have you been using them? Because I'm interested in if they got any degradation or something like that. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. So um, um, we didn't use the polymer lens like for like uh, several weeks, but uh, we already did uh, at least five or six experiments. E each time we use at least three or four days. So, so um, I think that uh, polymer lens already lasts for like uh, um, several weeks and we didn't notice any damage on the cell. And it's right. um, really high quality, I think, yeah. R really yeah. like it. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And um, I have one last question. I don't see any more from anyone else. Um, so for the, for the realignment method or for the image registration method, uh, do you think that this would be applicable to images that are non-identical? Uh, like if we go through a rocking curve, I mean, this is a problem that you've seen that was discussed, I think, in the last session with the, that Leora brought up um, and yeah. that uh, Vanessa discussed quite extensively. Um, mm, yeah, I think uh, for, uh, because I talk to method here, so for the cross correlation method, you have to, um, the image has to be identical, you have to find the um, relative displacement. So I don't think that one can be used. So, but uh, I'm hoping we can come up with um, this machine learning method to find because when you do the rocking um, curve, actually, like two two near angle may have like a similar feature. So it uh, it's possible to use this machine learning method to find the displacement instead of uh, using cross correlation because you can use a lot a lot of training data to train your model to learn the structure of this sample or this kind of sample. So you can apply this network for all the samples in the future. I think it, it's possible, but it's uh, hard, hard to do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not an easy problem to solve. That's why I ask, I'm wondering if some, if, who else has solutions for it. Um, so thank you. Uh, so now I think it's time to move to our final speaker of the day uh, and 